So I've been covering virtual reality for about a year now, and in that time span, we've seen some amazing stuff happen. Luckily nowadays, you don't need to invest a whole lot of money to get started with VR. You did last year when it first came out, but now the headsets themselves have come down in price in addition to the PCs. You don't need to have a really super spec device to actually power VR. And that's what I'm gonna get into in this video. Now, there's a broad range of devices you could use for VR, but for the average consumer, they might not know. So I'm gonna be showing you exactly how does VR perform on all types of different PCs. I'll briefly talk about some of the specs of these devices, but I'm not gonna go down into benchmark testing and all that. I'm gonna actually show you how VR works with them, what it takes to get started, and what is the actual performance. The first one we're getting started here is a tablet. It's one of my favorite daily drivers, and it is the Huawei MateBook. Now, this particular configuration here is roughly $1,000, and I like it for the fact that it is portable, it's great for trade shows, and I still get a lot of work done with it. But when it comes to running VR, you could pretty much scratch this one off your list because the Huawei MateBook has some hardware limitations that prevent that. And on top of that, the specs aren't really the best out there. It only has an Intel Core M5 processor with 8GB of RAM. So in terms of the hardware limitations, it only has an integrated graphics card. It doesn't have a dedicated one. And seeing that it has only a single USB Type-C port, even if you use the optional dock that comes with it, you don't have enough USB ports to actually get the Oculus Rift set up, and you're not gonna see anything through the headset. The next time we'll be talking about here are gaming-centric laptops. There are two different variations. One of them is more of portable, ultrabook type, and the other one is a humongous monster type of gaming PC. This is the Acer Predator 17X, which was announced last year, but I've been using it for the last six months. Now this particular configuration sells for around $2,700. It features an Intel Core i7 processor, 32 gigabytes of RAM, and the GeForce GTX 980 GPU. I personally enjoyed using the Acer Predator 17X. In fact, many of my video reviews in the last few months have been done using the Acer Predator 17X. Getting the Rift set up was a breeze just because you have all the USB ports, the HDMI port at your disposal, and the performance overall is just stellar, smooth, silky, low latency. And even though it's technically a laptop, you could carry it around, bring it elsewhere, and still experience VR in its full glory, and you don't really have too many compromises. The next laptop I'm gonna get into here is the MSI GS63 VR Stealth Pro. And I've been using it for the past month now, and compared to the Predator 17X, I like it because it's far more streamlined, more compact, it's not as bulky or beefy as Acer's model, and on top of that, it is VR capable. Now this particular model features an Intel Core i7 processor, 16 gigabytes of RAM, the GeForce GTX 1060 GPU, and it roughly costs around $1,500. Now, when I compare it to the Acer, the MSI does a fantastic job of handling VR, pretty much on par with what the Acer does. But you could tell, of course, the size factor here is a benefit for it. But I do notice that when you're running or experiencing VR using battery power, that's when we notice a little bit of a hitch with the performance. It's not as smooth, there are some stuttery movements with it, and does kind of impact the experience. So you'll want to use it plugged in. And the last one I'm going to be talking about here is a custom Cybertron PC, which I had built last year and it features an Intel Core i7 processor. I maxed out the RAM, so it's 64 gigabytes of RAM in there, and has the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1080 GPU. I believe it costs well over $3,500. When you spend that much money on a PC, you could only expect top-notch performances, and that's what I got using the Cybertron PC. Like I said, it's been almost a year since I've had it, and it's still running flawlessly, and it's still gonna be able to handle VR games well into the next few years. So yeah, the Cybertron PC for me continues to be the best performing out of the bunch when it comes to virtual reality, but don't count out those other two laptops just because they're more than capable of handling VR. And between those two laptops, I definitely would lean towards the MSI, even though the performance on battery power isn't the best, if you have it plugged in, it's great. And on top of that, it's still far more portable to carry around. 
what's really amazing here is the price disparity between last year and now so when the Cybertron PC was built it cost well over three thousand dollars and then when I compare that to the MSI which came out very recently at roughly around fifteen hundred dollars it's just crazy that this fifteen hundred dollar gaming VR ready laptop is more than capable of running VR just like the PC so there you go guys, that is our quick look on how VR runs on different types of PCs. If you want to learn more about any of the stuff I talked about here in this video, you can check out our website, VR Source, your source for all kinds of reality.